Heavenly Father, we just thank you. You are the great God. Yes. We magnify you and worship you that you are greater than anything going on in our lives. We make sure we magnify the greater thing. That you meet all of our needs. You supply the Spirit of God to us. We give you praise and honor and glory in this house. In Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Meet and greet those around about you. Give a big hug to those. Those of you watching online, thank you for joining with us today. We're so glad to have you. It's, a, it's an honor to be with you and you with us. God richly bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. We're starting to roll out some different things for YouTube, uh, different YouTube channels and different social media. How many of you know Paul wrote to Timothy one time and he said, when you come, bring the parchments with you. We would call it paper. How many of you know that was the social media of the day? A letter lit written. A, a, it could be a love letter to somebody or you could be writing a letter that you dislike somebody but how many of you know that's how they communicated i believe we should use every avenue available amen it's the heart behind it that makes it either evil or good and that we want to use it for good amen if you need an offering envelope this morning just lift your hand lift your hand real high one of the ushers will meet that need don't forget about your building offerings and everything whether you separate them or put it together just as long as it comes in It'll all be good, praise God. Who's having a birthday or an anniversary that we can help celebrate this past week? Or maybe we missed it a week. Amen. Happy birthday, Elvis. Good. Thank you. I'll come back to you then. Amen. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Good, good, good. Amen. Happy birthday. Thank you. Amen. Okay, Elvis, how many years you been married? 36. 36. Boom. Hey, Doc, how many years you been married? Three, amen. Nice to see you all the way from uh, the coast of Carolina there, right? Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Let's all stand together. So good to have everybody here. Amen. Thank you for coming out on this rainy day. There's no place I'd rather be than with a family. Amen. Heavenly Father, we worship you. We thank you for the anointing that rests upon your word that makes all of our enemies melt like wax we appreciate you and we love you we thank you lord we present our finances to you we want the kingdom of god to advance bless what we give the sow that we seed cause it to reproduce and again and again this continues we thank you for it in jesus name amen come and plant your seed Open your Bibles, if you would, this morning to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12. I'm going to do something a little unusual for me. We're going to read out of the Message Bible a few times because it just brings it down to a language that I like and I think that you'll appreciate as well. I want to talk to you about what Jesus looks like. No, not a picture that you can hang on the wall. But what does Jesus look like? How many of you know the Bible says that Jesus is moving and Satan is moving, but they both describe what they look like? And I'm not talking about a facial recognition, but how they move, you can tell, well, that's the Lord, and that's the devil, or that's the flesh, or that's my soul. How many of you know you should be able to recognize some different things? But this is moving strongly on my heart, and I believe it's for us, this church today, those watching around the country as well. 
verse 15 of chapter 12 from the message Jesus knowing that they were out to get him moved on a lot of people followed him and he healed them all he also cautioned them to keep quiet following guidelines set down by Isaiah look well at my hand-picked servant I love him so much take such delight in him and I've placed my spirit on him how many of you know the Lord loves us that much too we have trouble receiving that side of love but he does he'll decree justice to the nations but he won't yell won't raise his voice there'll be no commotion in the streets he won't walk over anybody's feelings he won't push you into a corner and before you know it his justice will triumph and there'll be a sound of his name which will signal hope even among far off unbelievers What's interesting about the Lord is He didn't come in here just rooting and snorting and tearing things up, saying, I'm the Messiah, and just tearing everything up and everything apart. I want you to notice Jesus, and this still amazes me to this day, that Jesus was born and lived under Roman occupation. Even in my mind, I wouldn't have thought that. I thought He would come when Israel was more on a high note, but He comes when, uh, when Rome was ruling Israel there, or overseeing it anyhow. And I don't have one political message in here where he's tearing up Rome. And even when the Pharisees and the Sadducees kept attacking him, Jesus kept going to church. Never did he try to split the church. He said, this is my father's house. Now he had a few things to say to them occasionally when they attacked him, but he didn't attack them. And I want you to begin to notice the character of the Lord. And I'm going to paint a picture here of the Good Samaritan in just a moment. And we'll be reading it out of the New King James, the regular version that I tend to use. But I want to talk to you some morning about what Jesus looks like and what he doesn't look like. And I want it to help get a reflection on the inside of us because we're supposed to walk as Christ walked. So the better that I can see him. And when David was picked, you know, a long time ago, he got the oldest sons, and he said, no, 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 and he got down to David, and he said, God does not see like man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So how many of you know, I need to be more concerned about my heart than my outward appearance? I need to make sure that other people see my heart and not some outward thing. Are people catching our hearts or are they catching our souls? Are they catching our opinions? Mm, Don't stop me. Let's read about the Good Samaritan. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up to test him. Okay, make sure you get the characters here. Anybody with me? I got to stop picking on lawyers or we'll never get any to come to church here. You know what I'm saying? But this is a lawyer, and he stood up to test the Lord. He's not asking him a sincere question. The Bible already points out his heart. How many of you know if you would have saw the lawyer that day, you would have said, oh, here comes a lawyer. He looks nice. He's dressed up. He's got his Armani suit on. Uh, You know, he looks okay. But the Bible is already telling you he came to test the Lord. The Bible already tells you what he's looking like. He's not here being sincere. He's testing the Lord. Amen? Amen. Anyhow, teacher, what shall I do to inherit life? And he said to him, what is written in the law and what is your reading of it? And he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus answered and said, you've answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he wanting to justify himself. Pay pay attention to these little words in here. But he, wanting to justify and said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? How many of you know none of us have trouble loving the unseen God? And you talk to people and they say, I love God, I love God, I love the Lord. How many of you know, but when Jesus was talking about this story, he tied your loving to the Lord to your neighbor. Now, now I need to talk to you because I got some good neighbors and I got some bad neighbors. Which one is my neighbor? How many of you know we would do the back pedal too? Because nobody has trouble loving the invisible God. But when Jesus tied the love of God to your neighbor, okay, now we got an issue. 
right? You guys just don't know my neighbor. And I got some here, so I got to be careful. You know what I'm saying? You just don't know my neighbor. You just don't know who I work with. Who is my neighbor? We would probably ask the same questions. Then Jesus answered and said, he's going to tell a story now. Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down to Jerusalem, to Jer- Jericho, and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounding him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, everybody say by chance. By chance. A certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levi, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. And so he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, took care of him. And on the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you. How many of you know who is your neighbor is who you meet by chance? We might call it by divine appointment. But when you go to a restaurant this afternoon and you see somebody all bent over and their head sunk down into their shoulders, by chance you met them today. By chance Who is your neighbor? It's who you meet by chance. It's who you run into today. Who did God send across your path today that might need a helping hand? That's who you met by chance. But I want to talk to you for a minute. As I begin to meditate on this, I think the wounded man probably would have praised God that the Levite didn't stop and the priest didn't stop. Because here's probably what would have happened if the priest would have stopped. He would have begun to bandage his wounds, and while he's doing it, he would have said, Why are you traveling this road alone? How stupid are you? Any fool knows you don't travel these roads alone. Have you ever been helped by somebody and beat up at the same time? I'll talk to this half for a while. Getting a little chilly over this side. No, I'm asking you a question. Have we ever been beat up? Why were we being helped? Has somebody then took upon themselves to correct us and lead us? And I'm bleeding all over the place. But now when he puts me on his animal, I'm already thinking I'm small. But now he tells me I'm a stupid and I'm a fool. Come on, anybody in the house. And I want you to notice that by chance... This was not his mentor or his pastor. People should have mentors. People, everybody should have somebody that can speak into your life. I agree with that. Everybody should have a pastor, not just in name only. I agree with that. But this says this meeting happened by chance. And this guy's bleeding. He's half dead. How many of you know there's a time for correction and there's a time just to be loving on somebody? Do you know what time it is? Can you tell the difference between one time and another time? How many of you know so much of the time we want to give everybody our opinion? Why do you think it's so valuable anyhow? I want to share something with you. And I've learned this through pastoring, and you're going to, you've learned it through experience. Unless somebody opens their heart to you, you're wasting your time. Unless somebody opens up to you, pastor, what do you think? Friend, what do you think? Mentor, what do you think? Or I need a mentor. Will you speak into my life? Unless people open a door, you're pretty much wasting your time. If they haven't asked for your opinion, why do you feel the need to give it? Because many of the times when we give our opinion, I'm not walking in their shoes. I'm not bleeding all over the place, at least right now. How stupid are you out to walk these roads alone? How many of you know the Bible said the priest evidently was by himself, the Levite was probably by himself, and the Samaritan was probably by himself? How many of you know we still like to judge people even when trouble didn't come on us? Nobody jumped me today, but why why are you so stupid to come out here? Are you a fool? My question is, have you ever been beat up while you've been helped? 
And have we ever been the person to do it? I'm talking about what Jesus looks like. And he doesn't look like that. He said he wouldn't run over your feelings. He wouldn't push you into a corner. Why can't we just love people and walk away? By chance. Now, again, I'm not their mentor. I'm not their pastor. By chance. By chance I ran into this person. Why do I have to feel the need to take them from A to Z? When did I become the Holy Spirit? I understand the Holy Spirit lives in me and He'll use me. But how, how, why do I feel a need to tell everything that's wrong with this guy who I just met? I don't even have an authority in his life. Why do I further need to injure him? Why do we feel the need to give everybody our opinion? Why can't we just love on somebody and walk away? And I've noticed that Jesus many times, the rich young ruler one time came to Jesus and and Jesus said, you know, give it all away and follow me. And the guy didn't. Jesus didn't chase, chase him. He just turned around and left. Jesus would come in and he'd go out of town. They have their own walk with God. All of us have got to find God on your own. And I can't give you my relationship. And when somebody does ask for help, here's a good way to do it. If Jamie would ask for help from me and uh, from a certain situation because he knew I'd been through something, then I should say this. Don't tell Jamie what to do explained what you did that way he's not the center of anything well jamie one time i faced this and i don't know if it's the same as yours but one time i faced this and i did this and this and this this worked for me this didn't work for me rather than telling people what to do why don't you say what you did you can say amen anywhere in here that you want to Why don't we tell people what we did rather than telling them what to do? Because when I talk about myself, I'm just a little bit more kinder. I'm a little bit more patient. My wife brought this out to me one time. She said, Gary, you are so kind to the church people. Why don't you treat me like that? (laughs) Now you all know here at church how well I treat her, right? Right? Yes. How many of you know sometimes when we let our hair down, we let it down at home? And these are the people that like us. These are the people who choose to love us. Get into a covenant with us. If you're going to let your hair down at home, don't let it be at somebody, but share your life with somebody. Don't attack them. They're the only ones that can stand you. Amen? You say, I can't find some of my friends. They can't stand you. These are the people that are still haven't left you yet. Be nice to them. Be kind to them. We've already chased off everybody else. Let's be nice to them. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Again, out of the message, because it just brings it home. A certain, again, everybody say, by chance. by chance. Now, you should have mentors, and somebody should be able to speak into your life. But if I just meet somebody by chance, they don't need my opinion and probably don't want it. Can I just love on them and walk away? I don't have to ridicule them. I don't have to make them feel small. Why can't I make them feel bigger? Why don't I tell them, man, you're going to make it. You're going to do fine. You're going to do fine. I've been through this. You're going to do fine. Your finances will turn around. Don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. That body will heal up. Don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. Why can't we as the body of Christ build people up rather than tear them down? How many of you know you can go to a lot of churches on a Sunday and be ripped to pieces? Now, sometimes that's your pastor. And it wasn't by chance. You're supposed to be here and I'm supposed to rip you apart. And then pour in the oil and the wine. But most of the time, most of the time, that's not the case. I want to go somewhere where I know I'm bleeding, 
can help somebody help me stop the bleeding you don't have to point it out you don't have to tell me all about it i know i'm bleeding does anybody have a tourniquet that i can use Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, from the message. Live creatively, friends. If someone falls into a sin, forgivenly restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. Let's just camp right here. <laughs> if someone falls into a sin... How many of you try to trip and fall and drop the cake and drop the turkey on the floor or try to injure yourself? How many tries to fall? If someone falls into sin, forgivenly restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know why we always feel like they're needed. Why do we feel, and I've kind of I figured it out, I think, because when I got in the mirror this morning, I could see some shortcomings in my life, but when I met you and I saw that you fell today, that makes me feel a little taller. And if I can bring that out a little bit more, I'll find out that I'm not as low as I thought I was because you're lower. But how many of you know after a while we're getting a good picture of you? I'm talking about what Jesus looks like. I've, I've used some of these things because sometimes you can't tell if it's Satan or the, or the devil. But if you begin to look at what they look like, you can spot it. Jesus is there to build me up and this other voice is tearing me down. Can you tell which one is which? You can. Because the Lord will never crush your feelings, never run over your heart. See, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you. Because in life, with the invisible God and the invisible devil, but they are visible, and you can recognize them. Amen. Amen. And we have been both those people at times. I have been God to somebody, and a few minutes later, I've been the devil. Anybody with me? We do know what we're talking about. We do know that. And you need to distinguish. You need to distinguish what's going on. You, you might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. Stoop down, reach out to those who are oppressed, share their burdens, and so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly deceived. Make a careful exploration. I thought it was the ice cream truck. Butter pecan, please. It's today's world. You might as well roll with it. You know what I'm saying? Make a joyful exploration of who you are and the work that you've been given. How many of you know nobody plans for their phone to go off in church? Why should I make them feel small? That's a perfect example right there. Don't you know that the anointed one is speaking? Don't you know that I am dropping a word hot right now? Anybody, anybody with me? Anybody see some things there? You, anybody see some weaknesses? And even though the statement could be true, what's it going to do to make fun somebody feel small? Does it make me more anointed? Brother Hagen one time was preaching in Miami, Florida when a televangelist fell who... If I told the name, you would recognize it. He was holding a meeting in Florida. So here comes these reporters, unconnected to this other evangelist, who fell. 
And they stuck a microphone up under his nose and said, what do you think about this fall? What do you think about this minister? And Brother Hagin said, blowing another minister's candle out doesn't make mine grow brighter. I thought, amen. Amen. But how many people would have took the opportunity to advance themselves while crushing another person? But see, if we begin to recognize and see God and see the devil, I'll begin to see that. Yeah, you just crushed him, but you didn't grow taller in my eyes. You grew smaller in my eyes. I'll throw that out there for free. Make a careful explanation of who you are and the work that you've been given and sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. 2 Timothy 2.23 But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. A servant of the Lord. Who are you, folks? Are you a servant of the Lord? Let the servants of the Lord say so. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel but be gentle to all. Are you a servant of the Lord? You must not be starting strife, in strife, in a quarrel, tearing things up, muddy in the water, but you must be gentle to all if you want to be a servant of the Lord. Amen. Proverbs nineteen twenty two. What is desired in a man is kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. What is desired? I talked this to a marriage thing one time, and I was, there were some single people there. They happened to be ladies, and I said, ladies, what you want in a man is kindness. Now, the type of man, you could get a redneck man, a mountain man. I just bring it where we are, you know what I'm saying? You might want a redneck man, you might want a mountain man, you might want a sports man, you might want a business man. Those are the types of man, but what you want in a man is kindness. What is desired in a man is kindness. And lady, this is you too. What is attractive in a woman is sweetness and kindness of a meek and gentle spirit. It's what's attractive. Amen? Amen? Well, I like me a rough man. Well, in five years from now, you make sure you keep that attitude. When his roughness turns from others to you. I, I, like, I like him. I like him rough. Well, just, okay. When he turns, see if it's who he is or she is. When they turn that, see it's all right when it's others. But when they turn that towards you and you live with it 24-7, y'all be happy with that. Thank you for your support. Philippians 4 verse 5. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. I'm trying to show you what Jesus looks like, and he was extremely kind and extremely gentle. And that's what he looks like. When he comes into a situ situation, he comes in with kindness and gentleness. One of the things I believe the Lord wants me to do this morning is sometimes we feel like, uh, I don't know if it's called a marinette, um, those puppets with strings on them. I'll call it puppet with strings on it. <laughs> they have a name, but I'll leave that alone. How many of you know life begins to attach itself to us? Tentacles begin to come. My uncle called me this when I was just a child. You'll never amount to nothing. Well, that built this string on me, and every time I thought I could do something, this string would tell me, I'll never amount to anything. And, and then I began to run into financial things and I began to run into other opinions and, and people began to tell me what they thought of me. 
And I didn't turn to the Word of God to ask Him what He thought of me, but other people began to tell me what they thought of me. And little did I know that out of their own pain, they were telling me what they thought of me because that's what they thought of themselves. But all these strings began to come upon me and these tentacles, and they began to control my life. I began to make decisions. And I began to, to date the people that looked like these strings. And I began to pick friends based on what people told me. And I began to do what they did. But the Lord says in the book of Proverbs and Psalms, cut the cords of the wicked. So this morning, I want to free you. I want to free you of anything that's put a chain on you. And it certainly is just that. It becomes a shackle. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to open the prison doors. With every eye closed, just... Do you even know who you are? Have others defined you? Have they put you into a box? That's why the Lord said that you're the head and not the tail. You're above. We need to turn to Him to find out who I am. He created me. Turn back to your Creator. Yeah, but Pastor, the person that told me that was a Christian. Yeah, but pastor, the one that talked to me that way was a pastor. Yes, but this morning, by God's grace, I have revealed to you what Jesus looks like. Jesus can come in the suit of a pastor, but so can Satan. Jesus can come in the suit of a, of a sheep, but so can Satan. Cut the cords that have been spoken over your life. Let your heart soar again. Some of you feel guilty to laugh because you were told that somehow. Some of you feel guilty enjoying life because someone made you feel that way you're not worthy of it. You shouldn't be enjoying that. You shouldn't be laughing. Who said that? Who said that? When Adam and Eve found out they were naked, they turned to God in the cool of the eve, and he said, we're naked. And he said, who told you that? Who told you? Who's given you that information? So right now, in the name of Jesus, with the sword of God, I cut the cords that have spoken over you and to you. The only cord that I want attached to you now is scriptural cords. You're the head and not the tail. Attach that. You are beloved of God. Attach that cord. You are full of His grace and His mercy is on you. Attach that cord. Let some be destroyed and let others reattach. In the name of Jesus. We break oppression, depression. I break a small inforting, in, um, um, that you can think better of yourself. Who told you you were that? I break its power in the name of Jesus. The one who wouldn't hurt a flea is not here to hurt you either, but to make you strong. Not strong in the weaknesses of others, but strong in Him. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. 
Not how good you are with words and make, cutting other people down. No, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you came in here today and you don't, you don't know the Lord. You're not sure you do. Boy, you've picked the right place. We've prayed for you. No, we didn't know if you were black or white or tall or short, male or female. But we've been praying for those seats that you would come. Would you like to give your heart to Christ? There's not a better time than right now. There's not a more supportive group than us right here because we did it too. In just a moment, I'm going to count to three. If you are unsure about your salvation, shoot your hand up and say, yeah, pastor, pray for me. Is that you? One, two, three, with uplifted hand. Do you know the Lord? And in the power of His might. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. you. Thank you, Lord. Amen.